Hello everyone. In this lecture, we shall talk about the field and herbarium techniques. So what is a herbarium? A herbarium is a collection of dried specimens of plants mounted on the herbarium sheets. So we have this big white sheets known as herbarium sheets on which the plant specimens are collected, dried and then mounted on them. So here is a picture of the herbarium sheet where one can see how the plant, a twig has been dried and stuck on the herbarium. We can see the various parts of the plant, namely the stem, the leaves and the flower. So whenever a collection is made, it is very important to collect all parts of the plant material. Herbarium was for the first time made by Cisalpini in the year 1550. Every herbarium specimen contains number and description of the plant. The techniques of the herbarium preparation involves the following. First, the collection of the plant material is very important. Pressing, drying, poisoning, mounting, stitching, labeling and storage these are the various techniques involved in the preparation of the herbarium. So in this particular slide, one can see the different tools that are required for the herbarium preparation. So when one is going out into the field for collection, he or she is required to carry a lot of tools, which includes the plastic bags, choppers, diggers, garden tools, small notebook and pen or pencil to take down notes, labels and tags, camera with GPS, binoculars, drying sheets and plant press. So let's now look at how we can collect the plant material. The plant specimens are collected at the time of their flowering and fruiting. It is very important. A minimum of two to three specimens are collected, which are then numbered and noted in the field notebook. A label is then attached and is tagged on to the specimen. After labeling, the specimens are put into the vasculum or polythene bags. The next step involves pressing. The unwanted parts of the plants are removed. One or two drying sheets are spread on a flat ground. Each plant specimen is placed on the sheets. The flowers, leaves are spread with fingers and another drying sheets are kept over it. The specimen is kept over the drying sheets until it reaches about one to one and a half feet. The board of the plant press is kept below the drying sheets and another above the drying sheets. This way the plant specimen gets pressed between the boards. So in this picture you can see how the plant press looks like the two wooden boards in between which we have the mounted plant specimens on the herbarium sheets and they are tied and left as such for a few days until the plant gets pressed completely. The next day the bundles are opened and the wet sheets are replaced by the new ones. They are tied and exposed to sunlight or they are shade dried and stored. So this is followed for about a week and in order to prevent certain insects from damaging the mounted plant specimen, insecticides such as DDT powder or mercury chloride may be applied over the half dry specimens. The dried plant specimens are then mounted on the thick white sheets or boards called as the herbarium sheets, which come in standard size of about 29 to 42 centimeters. They are prepared from high quality durable card sheets. The specimen is carefully stuck on the herbarium sheet or gummed or sometimes if the plant specimen is thick, they are stitched or glued with cellophane tapes. Some of the loose plant parts such as flowers or fruits or small seeds are kept in paper packets and pasted on the mounted sheet. All the relevant details of the plant are filled in the label which is found 
at the lower right hand corner of the herbarium sheet. The relevant details includes the herbarium number, the site of collection, date of collection, botanical name of the plant, common name, classification details, etc. The sheets are then stacked in different shelves and placed in the herbarium house. DDT or carbon tetrachloride or ethylene dichloride is used to protect the herbarium specimens. These are few glimpses of the herbarium, how they are tagged. You can see the way it is labeled. This is the largest herbarium at Kew Botanical Gardens. So what are the uses of the herbarium techniques? It shows morphological variations, the habit patterns in each plant, provides information on the geographic location of the plant. It can be used as teaching aids for young researchers. It can be helpful for identifying of a plant. It helps us to match with the new plant, compare. Thus, you can trace evolution of plants. New system of classification can be proposed. It provides complete information about the wild, cultivated and domestic plants which are introduced as well as their uses. I hope this lecture was informative. Thank you.